When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. This experiment is a relatively straightforward ex experiment. What you would have done, you would have had your equipment list. Within your equipment list, you would have had a similar concentration of certain different types of salts. It was, so you would have had it in solution. So, for example, 0.1 molar liter solutions of sodium chloride, potassium chloride, ammonium chloride, and then maybe you also have some tap water. These salts might not be the salts you had in class. It's just important to know whatever salt you used, remember that salt. And then remember what happened after you put them onto a spot plate. Onto a spot plate. So these might have been the salts that you have, might have had. You would have had um, your pH meter or your universe indicator or both just to check the pH. And you would have also had your spot plate. So what you would have done first is you would have put your solution on that spot plate, a bit of that solution of sodium chloride solution, a bit of that potassium fluoride solution as well on one of the other spot plates, a bit of that ammonium chloride solution, and a bit of that tap water as well. So I'll just use white for tap water. And then what you've done is you used your, either your pH meter or your indicator to check the actual pH of those. So after you put up on your spot plate, you check the pH. So again, very straightforward experiment. But the idea behind this experiment is just for you to see that there's different pHs for different types of salts. They're not all neutral. And what you would have gotten, again, remember this would have been different for the different types of salts you might have used. But the ones I used in this example, the first one would be in sodium chloride. So we had water, because it says solution. We've got water now solution. We've got water sodium ions and chloride ions and because these come from a respectively strong acid and strong base there's not, not going to be any shift back there's not going to be any shift back they're going to stay like that in the solution which is why overall the solution you would have found it to be neutral because there's not going to be any it's a completion a reaction that goes to completion there's no reversible part to it which means this here is a neutral solution so for sodium chloride it was a neutral solution. That would be to expect. That would be expected. Now, the next one would have been potassium fluoride. So we've got our potassium ions here, which come from the salt, and our fluoride ions here, which were also in the salt itself. And the potassium comes from sodium, potassium hydroxide, and the fluorine comes from fluoric acid. In this case, because potassium hydroxide is a strong base, the conjugate acid, which is our potassium ion is a very weak, very weak conjugate acid. So it's going to be very unlikely for it to donate anything. Whereas on the other hand, we had fl fluoride ions, which came from a, the opposite was the conjugate. So fluoric acid was the acid. The conjugate base is our fluoride ion. And this is a stronger, stronger, conjugate base than potassium ions. So when we compare potassium ions and our fluorine ions, this one's stronger than our potassium. And what that means, it's more likely to grab the actual hydrogen from water. And by doing so, it itself, well, some of it, not, not all of it, but some of it, it only has to be some of it, some of it will turn into, back into fluoric acid, hydrofluoric acid. Some, some of it turned into hydrofluoric acid. But by doing so, by grabbing that hydrogen off of water, so here's the water, and some of it will turn back into hydroxide ions. By turning some of that into hydroxide ions, the solution itself will have more of this, which means it's more basic than it was beforehand. Which means that this salt, so potassium fluoride, which was this one right here, this would give you a slightly higher pH than the neutral. It wouldn't be too much higher, but only slightly. So it's higher pH, so again, I don't know what it would have been, but maybe something between eight and, and nine-ish, a bit more than neutral. And for the next one, for water and ammonium chloride, as our ammonium ions, in this case, the ammonium ion came from ammonia. This is a weak base, so the actual conjugate acid will be relatively strong compared to, especially compared to the chlorine ions. So this is going to be a conjugate acid. 
and the chlorine ion is a very, so the hydrochloric acid, which was on this side, is a very, very strong acid, and thereby makes a very weak conjugate base. This is a very weak conjugate base, which means it has absolutely no intention of grabbing anything because it's very weak. So what's going to happen is you're going to have this, this hydrogen here from your hydronium being donated to the water molecule because that's what acids do, they donate. And this is going to be more likely to happen than the other way around. The chlorine ions, because they're very happy to be the way they are, they're going to, not going to do anything. Whereas a few of, not all of them, but a very few of them, of the ammonium ions will donate a hydrogen to the water molecule and thereby themselves become hydro uh, ammonia. Right, so that will increase on this side. But so will the hydroxide. And the hydroxide increasing is the important part. So the hydroxide increased because that hydrogen was donated to water, and thereby some of that water will turn back into hydroxide. And this obviously is acidic, which means our pH is lowered, so it lowers our pH. So you'd expect you'd have expected the ammonium chloride to produce a low pH, or a lower than neutral pH, so lower pH than neutral. And you would expect water itself to produce a neutral pH. And that would have been your control. Right, so again, a very simple straightforward experiment. But what you should know is you should know why and why it has a higher pH, why it has a lower pH. What is it actually causing it to have those types of pHs? And this video and the last video hopefully helped explain that a bit. But yeah, I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.